Satan. But remember, Satan was an anointed what? Cherub. The one. The anointed cherub. He was the host of them. Right? But he but pride, he looked upon himself and thought that he wanted to be higher than God. That's why the the premise of every sin you commit is pride. Is it safe to say that when he spoke? Came out in melodies somewhat, or did he have a music, a musical type? Most people say that, but when this is talking about, that's why they say all music, even though some of this music is is it, satanic and all this kind of stuff. But when it says thou, uh, the workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee, uh, it's just speaking about the uh, just his speech, uh, not so much it was melodic in a sense that you know he every time he talked he sang, you know, not nothing like that. Like, you know, people just say any type of stuff. But he was basically just talking about the way his, his sound or his voice was made. Everything was perfect when he was created, right? It had nothing to do with him being a minister of music, you know, like people say all the time, you know. The devil, because really, music is the words that you put in it. You could take a, a, a rock and roll beat, a R&B beat, a rap beat, or whatever the, the beat may be. They could all have the same beat. Just different words. The words make the music. Because if you just put a beat on, if you don't know, if you never knew the song or the words that went with that beat, you would just groove to a beat. Because half the time today, people are not listening to what these people are saying. Especially these rap songs. Even if you're listening, you don't know what they're saying. So, so half the time, you're just grooving to a beat anyway. Right? There's nothing sinful about music and the beat. It's the words that are being said that convey the message. Okay? Uh, go go to one more scripture, Leviticus, real quick. Because I'm a, uh, uh, so, uh, and we're talking about the cherubims and the mercy seat, right? The cherubims covering the mercy seat. We said that the mercy seat was the place of propitiation, which represented Christ on the cross. Okay, go ahead. Okay, we start talking about Satan as a cherub. Uh -huh. Does his image, which we say, the cherubim is there to protect? And face God, correct? Uh -huh. All of them facing God. Is that a reason why there's no angel face on any of those cherubims? All of them are animal made or man? All four of the cherubims reflect something, correct? Man, uh -huh. eagle, uh -huh. ox, lion, uh -huh. but all face him. Yeah. So did Satan hold one of those positions at one time? Yeah, he was the anointed cherub. He was the top one. Yeah. He was at the throne of God. Yeah. So what what are you asking? Is that what you're asking? That's exactly what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he did, yeah. One. He held one of those positions. He was the anointed cherub. He was actually he, over one of those positions. Yeah. Like the like how the chief priest and the high priest are. That the chief priest is over the, the, the high priest. That's how Satan was. He was the uh, I guess the the leader of the army, so to speak. That he was the, the anointed chair. Huh? To protect would have been the exactly. Power. Yeah. Okay. His job would have been to protect. To, to protect the way of God. Okay. Right. And like most people, when they get high positions, they start to feel themselves. Yes. And then you know, yeah. and it goes haywire from there. Okay. That's yeah. why I was just trying to figure out why he would be the chair of them. And I thought about it. He is. He was, but he was an angel. As far as I'm concerned, and angel and man don't hold the same position. No, he was the top. The yeah, top he was angel. The, now. now yeah. Angels and seraphims are different. Yeah, because that, that, this you have cherubim, seraphims, and you have angels. Okay. Seraphim. Yeah. I'm a seraphim. Yeah. So 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 <laughs> understand that the cherubims were they were created beings, right. almost like angels, but they were. The Bible doesn't oh, describe them as being angels. Describe. It describes them as cherubims. Or beast. Or, or beast, yeah. 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 Okay. It, it, whenever it talks about angels, it says angels. Right. Yeah. So there's there's a difference in them. And one of the differences is how they look. The cherubims have four faces. The angels didn't have that. That's a good side study, man. Yeah. It really See, is. That's what I'm yeah. trying to... Yeah. I'm going to write this down so I can... Yeah, the, ser that. the seraphim... Uh, yeah. You know, I'll, I'll, uh, when we cover this, I'm going to pick it up, and I'll, I'll go.
because the seraphim is only mentioned one time in scripture. So when we when we when you look at that, it's just a description of it. It doesn't really speak too much about it. Okay. Uh, but look at Leviticus 17. Look at Leviticus 17, look at verse 10. And whatsoever man there be of the house of Israel or of the strangers that sojourn among you that eateth any manner of what? Blood. I will even set my face against that, that soul that eateth what? Blood. And will cut him off from among his what? Now, why is it such a harsh thing to eat blood? The life is in the blood. Okay, here we go. Look at verse 11. Amen. For the life of the flesh is in the what? Blood. It's in the blood. And I have given it to you upon the what? Altar. Upon the altar to make an atonement for your what? Souls. Souls. Remember now, they're going to have a day of atonement, but all of these things back here, that mercy seat, all of this represented that day of atonement. Paul says in Romans 5, 11 that we have the atonement when? Right now. now. We're not waiting for a day of atonement because these things were offerings to a shadow of what was going to come to them. Okay? But we receive it now by the grace of God. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the what? Soul, right? Therefore I say unto the children of Israel, no soul of you shall eat blood, neither shall any stranger that's adjoined among you eat blood. Right? And the blood is it. Now, we'll end with this here. Go to Romans 5. And we'll end with this as far as what the blood did for us. Hey, real quick, that's why the Jehovah's Witnesses let their loved ones die because of that scripture that said the life is in the blood. So if they got a loved one on the deathbed, they won't do blood transfusion. Wow. Because of that scripture. Because they let people die. They get some life. They crazy. Yeah, well, you know, that being a blur. <laughs> yeah, go to Romans 5 and 8. <laughs> but God did what? Commended his love toward us, and that while we were yet what? Christ did what? Much more than being what? No, 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 being what? Now. Now justified by his Blood. We shall be saved from wrath through who? Him. Through him. Okay, look at verse 10. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. So it's the blood, which the life is in the blood, which the blood made atonement on the mercy seat, on the cross. All of these things happen for us now. So we're justified by the blood of Christ now. They're waiting on this atonement, right? Look at verse 11. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now, now received the what? Atonement. They're still waiting on that day of atonement. Jesus. See that? We'll pick back up in uh, Hebrews 9 uh, uh, on Wednesday. We'll pick back up. Any questions or comments? All right, let us pray. Father God, we thank you now for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for your love, kindness, and understanding. We thank you for another day. We thank you that we're able to come together and fellowship in the mystery, uh, and that we're able to worship you in spirit and in truth. We ask right now that you just touch us. Bless us right now, God. Uh, 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 touch our, uh, our bodies and our minds, oh God, as we continue to go through. Uh, uh, we're fighting the good fight of faith, oh God, with any fight that comes opposite, with any type of fight that comes opposition. And Father God, give us the strength right now to stand in the midst of opposition, yes. uh, 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 proudly proclaiming the gospel of Christ. We ask you right now that you just continue to bless us, strengthen us, O oh God, as we go through. Uh, uh, touch those who are dealing with uh, sickness, bereavements, O oh God, any type of ailments. Uh, we ask that the grace of God comfort them right now. Uh, uh, Father God, it's not that you're not able, but Father God, it's according to your will. And we accept your will, whatever that may be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.